Welcome to the Wealthy Circle Podcast, where we take a deeper dive into this year's finalists and winners from our wealthmanagement.com 2020 Industry Awards. These interviews cover the challenges, innovations, and trends in the wealth management industry and the individuals working to help advisors better help their clients. Thanks very much for joining us. I'm David Armstrong, editor-in-chief of wealthmanagement.com. Uh, we are here for the Wealthy Circle Podcast talking to finalists and winners from our wealthmanagement.com industry awards. And with me now is uh, Yang Zhu. Yang is the founder of Trading Front. He was a finalist in two categories, our most re- recent awards, including the category of client onboarding and the client portals technology. Yang, thanks very much for joining us. Hey, uh, David. It's my pleasure to be here. I should also note that uh, in this month's issue of Wealth Management Magazine, uh, Yang is one of our 10 to watch. So hopefully you'll get a sense of why we made that decision in this discussion today. Yang, first of all, where does this podcast find you? Where are you uh, calling in from? Are you uh, working from home, East Coast, West Coast? Where are you? Yeah, I'm working from home on the East Coast. It's the suburb of of Philadelphia. It's a town called Newtown Square, Mm kind of 20 minutes, 30 minutes west of Philadelphia. Okay. And this is the trading front uh, headquarters there? Or is this where you live? Yeah, that's correct. We have a small team here. We do have a few employees who are also working remotely. For example, our marketing head of marketing is in New Jersey. My head of sales is in uh, Atlanta. So kind of okay. separated because we use a lot of technology these days. It really doesn't matter where the team sits. Sure. Yep. I think a lot of companies are finding that too. First of all, uh, let's just start out with this. Uh, give me the elevator elevator pitch for Trading Front. What problems do financial advisors have that Trading Front is is wants to solve? Right. I think it kind of started with my background. I was a independent advisor. Started a advisory firm with a few partners back 10 years ago, and we had a zero Wall Street experience. But we thought, hey, if we know how to read academic papers on how to manage money, we should try it. So we kind of started the firm by ourselves. You were in, those, I don't want to interrupt. You were in graduate school, correct? Were you yes, graduate, graduate school. Um, Master of Science in Finance from Drexel University. Mm-hmm. Right, that's kind of where I met my previous partners in a RA business. We are all like PhDs and master of finance. Uh, we read papers for fun, academic papers. Then we thought, hey, if we can read papers, why can't we just try to manage these high net worth clients' money? That's the first idea. On, let's try on how to, and let's try to manage clients' money. We do registration of RA. Apply for the license, took took uh, examinations, called up all these quantitative strategies, but in the end, they're more than just coming come up with a strategy with a good story. It's all about client experience, right? How can you open those accounts for your clients as soon as quickly as possible? Is there a, a centralized, unified system you can manage your day to day operational tasks? For example, trading over. 200 accounts among 20 model portfolios. And after that, where can your clients log in to see the performance? Can they keep in touch with you either through email or text you? How can you manage the compliance requirements of communicating with the clients, deliver ADV, uh, I, I, I am made. Can you prove to the uh, regulator that your client read your private, privacy notice, a privacy policy? Mm-hmm. All those just more than just coming up with a good strategy. Yeah, uh, so you found quickly, you found, you learned early on, found quickly that uh, the investment advisory space is not just uh, uh, having a good investment portfolio or having a good strategy, having a good uh, uh, sub-managers. You actually have to get clients in the door and you're a service, uh, you're a service business. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that's absolutely right. I think um, we had zero as on the management, zero you know, wash experience. So we were doing everything we could from coding up the strategy, finding the clients, figuring out a compliance requirement, everything in-house, mm-hmm. uh, just small team. That's, that's where we learn how actually how the industry works, how the advisory business works, just doing mm-hmm. everything from scratch and everything in-house. So back to the, uh, the picture trading from is, you know, we kind of focus on three core offerings. 
Number one, client onboarding experience, white label process. Number two, model portfolio management, uh, where we can help the advisor save hiring a supervisor, which may cost 20 to 25 basis point. Mm -hmm. And third component would be client engagement, including performance reporting, mobile app, and direct messaging. So that's the pitch where if you are a breakaway RAA or a sub 100 mil RAA just trying to get started, we provide a unified system to help you engage all these operational tasks so you can focus your time on actually advising the client. Got it. I, now, as you know, there's a lot of vendors out there for RIAs that will do all that kind of thing. We'll do each of those sorts of things. Your unique proposition is that you do them all in one place and you do them for a very low cost, correct? Yeah, that's correct. And then I think I want to go on record by saying it, it's impossible to do everything at the same time. If you can, if you want to try to do that, like for example, if create a fintech platform, try to serve all the clients out there, it's going to be extremely costly. Um, I mean, we've been learning from these industry pioneers in the past few years and try to improve what they have built by rebuilding and repackaging and, re and putting all the pieces together in a better and more efficient way. So yes, we are targeting a specific segment of the industry, which is the sub 200 mil, 100 mil independent RAAs. We think our platform can provide what they need at that current stage where when they grow to, into, into bigger RAAs, they can definitely use more expensive, maybe have a platform with more features, but that's not our primary focus these days. You want to uh, focus on the sub 200 million perhaps 100 million and perhaps even lower than 100 million advisor, younger, just starting out, uh, who's looking for an all-in-one solution, kind of a soup to nuts, as we say, solution for uh, the business that they're trying to establish, correct? Right, that's correct. Just looking at industry, you know, David, you also know this industry very well. RAs need a CRM, right? Trading, onboarding, reporting, engagement. I mean, each of these categories has more than a dozen vendors out there for these independent advisors newer advisors when they come into the industry it's going to be costly for them to find the best solution and it's unreasonable for a you know two men or three men shop to put all these pieces together like are they going to talk to each of the vendors do diligence on each of the vendors how can they do that while just trying to get started on their foot Right. So we trying to help these independent RAs by providing a unified, affordable solution. That's the concept where we learned hard firsthand 10 years ago. Yeah. So should advisors think of you as a custodian, as a, uh, as a vendor, or uh, I, you talk a little bit about your uh, custodial relationship. I think uh, you're an overlay to interactive brokers. That's your partner and that's your custodian. How is that working? Right. Uh, we kind of think us as a custodial solution. Okay. Right now, we have deep integration with interactive brokers. And speaking of these custodians, Schwab was Schwab is buying TD as that's pretty much down. And we've seen other custodial consolidations among you know, Folio, Goldman Sachs, and Morgan Stanley plus E-Trade. And you look at the marketplace here, uh, these custodians available for these RAAs are getting fewer and fewer. It's kind of more, almost like the, the big custodians wings are, but when they're getting too big, it, it's just unreasonable. They can provide the same level of customer service or attention to all these RAs, especially for smaller RAs. So we yeah. work with IB. We like IB's uh, transparent pricing. We like IB's execution quality. And we are the, probably the first technology platform working with IB on helping these uh, independent advisors. Yeah, it's interesting because uh, I've always known interactive brokers as a platform for you know, very active traders, traders, uh, you know, RAs or advisors, wealth managers that use options and trading strategies and have sort of complicated portfolio management uh, tools that they're, they're doing and, and interactive brokers support that, that kind of a, a trader. You've basically using their backbone, simplifying their 
uh, you, you're making it very simple to to use. I mean, would an advisor even know that they are uh, custodying with interactive brokers if they're going through the trading front platform? Right. I think uh, that's a uh, really true statement. Number one, we just taking the best of these custodians and then we say, okay, IB has good execution quality, great custodial solution. Uh, let's use IB for the RA custodial solution. And I think as an RA, fiduciary duty, that's number one. That means they need to vet all these custodians, right? For example, IB has good execution quality. That's a plus for these RAs who understand the execution quality for a client. That's part of fiduciary duty. And when these RAs work with us, they will know IB is the execution broker and a custodian. That will give these RAs a level of confidence. Uh, and also it's easier for them to talk to the clients by working with a reputable custodian. Yeah, for sure. And you've mentioned the uh, execution quality a, a few times there. Talk a little bit about that, because I think you're right. When you, you look at the market for custodians out there for uh, RAs, truly small RAs, you're right. There are fewer and fewer options. We saw the Schwab acquisition of TD take out one platform that was specifically targeted, I think, or, or made their business out of the smaller advisor. That's no longer there. Schwab swears that they are going to still pay attention to the sub $100 million advisor. Remains to be seen, but that's their promise. Uh, nonetheless, there are distinctions between you and Schwab, not just in terms of the size of the advisor you're using, but in what you call execution quality. Talk to me a little bit about that and how the trading front execution quality can be a standout feature that advisors need to be aware of. Yes, absolutely. If we're in the era of commercial free trading, right? Robin, who started that, I mean, not just Robin Hood, me, all these broker dealers, they, they all kind of have some commission free uh, features, uh, but they were not available for retail clients, right? Uh, if you're high net worth clients with a, a few custodians, you will probably were going to ask, hey, can I do commission free? Your custodian will say, yes, for sure, because you're high net worth clients. But Robin Hood started the commission free concept, rolled it out to retail clients industry, in, in broker dealer industry a few years back. That was the first drop. And, you know, a few months back, probably late of the last year, the, uh, you know, around September and introducing um, I, I, I interactive brokers, they rolled out a, a commission free uh, trading platform for retail clients. Then subsequently Schwab and TD, they were all announced commission free trading. So yeah. technically in the era of commission free. The dominoes um, fell. It started with um, started there with Robinhood, interactive brokers, and then the dominoes just fell. fell. Everybody went commission free. Right. I think we need to look at this commission free concept into two different dimensions. Number one is for retail. I mean, if I'm a retail client, I only trade say 20 times per year. I don't really care about the execution quality because all these broker dealers they have to abide to a certain standard, you know, regulated by the FINRA and SEC. Uh, mm -hmm. But if I'm an RA, I'm trading for my clients, I have a fiduciary duty to evaluate the, the real execution quality for my clients and collectively, what's the negative impact for the industry, then I need to dig into the weeds of what's the, what's the driver behind the commission free. Nothing is free, right? We, don't, we don't right. all know that. No, nothing is really free. So the concept commission free behind it is these broker dealers they will sell these order flow to other high frequency trading firms. Uh, that was that that is a traditional business model, but Robinhood kind of bought that business model to the next level. Two thirds of the revenue they made was based on these order flows to high frequency trading firm. And when a broker dealer is selling these orders to high frequency trading firm, um, there's an argument that hey, if this high frequency trading firm is paying you know, three times average pricing than the normal price they would pay for the order flows, you will naturally worry about these uh, execution quality. Mm -hmm. So we, we work with IB and IB is being transparent about the commercial free versus non-commercial free trading platform. When these RAs work with trading from, they will work with IB's professional trading platform, which is non-commercial free. That platform will potentially give these advisors net uh, more net uh, uh, in price improvement than the traditional commission-free platform. 
Yeah. Uh, and I know there's been a lot of work in trying to actually kind of quantify some of those trade-offs that you're making by paying for commissions versus having your order sold into the uh, high-frequency traders where that tipping point is, where it becomes advantageous to uh, actually pay for commissions if you're getting best execution, guaranteed best execution, right? Uh, right. That's, that's right. It's very technical. We've seen a lot of conversations on it, but we also do our research and I think all these broker dealers, they need to abide a, a standard, which is called NBBO, National Best uh, Bid Offer. But, even, but, but, but right now, we see an increasingly volume executed off exchange, right? So we know the trading will be executed at exchange and off exchange. If you, if you let's say you buy Apple, right? Dave, you buy Apple, I'm a broker dealer. Yep. You place a buy order mm-hmm. with me. I yep. can send the buy order to the exchange for execution directly, mm-hmm. or I can sell your order to a high-frequency trading firm. Uh, when I sell your order to a high-frequency trading firm, that order will not be executed at the exchange directly. If m- fewer and fewer volumes get executed on exchange, the national best bid offer will be widened. That means the execution quality will potentially be decreased. We've seen evidence that more and more volumes are executing, executing uh, off exchange because this mm-hmm. order flow, a payment for order flow practice. Right, it's being sold. And then we know that the, uh, the, the, the traditional brokerages and, and the, that act as custodians for RAs do participate in this. They, they sell order flow uh, and, and also make money uh, from uh, interest rate spreads is another area I think where they make money. And I think you guys have some thoughts about that. If, if you're looking for transparent pricing uh, in, in trade execution, and that's an advantage of the trading front platform, how is trading front going to make money? Well, we started this platform by thinking, you know, this is the business we want to get in for 10, 20 years. And we didn't get any outside uh, fund. Like, so this is not a startup platform where we create a lot of marketing stunts than kind of boost up the valuation, right? We're actually trying to build something. So a lot of clients ask about our pricing and we have our pricing on the website because what we know that we are not building this platform for all these RAs out there, right? We are not trying to serve these 500 mil RAs. We're just trying to smaller independent RAs. So it's a flat fee, $100 per month, which covers either the first 100 accounts all the first $10 million as an under management. And we are going to grow. When we grow, we're going to build more features and we build more features, we could potentially create a, a different matrix of uh, offering uh, where you know, the lower offering could suit better for the smaller RAs and more complicated feature enriched offering would be suited for these bigger RAs where we can uh, charge them more. But we just, simply right now doing a, a flat platform fee. Okay. And that could change. Is, is that a platform fee all encompassing then? I mean, if, an, if I were an advisor and I uh, were choosing this uh, best execution quality, uh, choosing to pay for trades and choosing best execution quality, is that wrapped up in that $100 fee or am I paying that in addition? Uh, no, we do not like uh, kind of wrap everything together. Uh, I mean, we're trying to unbundling everything, right? A couple of years back, everybody's trying to bundling everything together. But right now, I think there's a trend of unbundling. One of the reasons why everybody's doing unbundling is because of pricing transparency. Like if we can separate, oh, this is the platform fee, $100 per month. And then that's the bro- commission you would pay to the broker dealer directly. I think the RNAs will appreciate that. So they can make the calculation and say, okay, this is the uh, cost I'm going to pay. That's the cost going to be charged by the broker dealer. And then that's the haircut. Uh, that's the, you know, the interest rate cut. Everything would be line itemized one by one. The RAs would know what they're paying and what their clients are paying. Okay. What do you guys think? Uh, uh, you said that your ideal client is somewhere in the 200, sub 200, sub $100 million range. You also talk about breakaway, breakaway advisors from warehouses. It struck me as maybe two different groups. Explain to me who the ideal client for Trading Front is and, and, and where you kind of see that market going. If we're talking about the sub $200 million, you know, young RIA just starting out, looking for options, maybe being frozen out of the Schwab, TD, 
Death Star mega merger there. Right. Uh, in, in your analysis, how big is that market? How many advisors are in that space? And how big is the pond or lake or ocean that you guys are fishing in? Right. I mean, that's a really interesting question. I mean, I think uh, wealthmanager.com has a lot of posts and discussion around that. The Schwabi trade deal started in November last year. Uh, we see a lot of industry research. I mean, estimation it could be around 10,000 RAs that we will have to pick and choose. Hey, are we going to stay with TD or Schwab? Is Schwab going to raise the uh, platform fee? Is that going to create more expense items? And then we have already seen some collateral damage these days, right? I mean, I think two higher management of the RA business and TD, they left the merged acquisition before the Schwab absorbed TD. And also Schwab kind of started the free financial planning yeah. too these days. That, that's a direct competition with these smaller independent RAs, including breaking away RAs. I mean, to us, the breakaway RAs and the sub-100 million RAs, no like, difference in terms of size and then what they're trying to do, right? And if you break away, you just become an independent RA with probably 50 mil, sub-100 mil as under management. You'll be competing with all these wirehouses, and, but your value add is your brand, is your dedicated advisory service. But right now, all these uh, uh, wirehouses, the big custodians, they are trying to maintain their profit margin or maintain their revenue in a low interest rate, zero commission environment. We will see more and more custodians uh, going direct to consumer. So the Morgan Stanley plus E-Trade, that's probably one of the best examples. I mean, Morgan Stanley has over 16,000 human advisors, 2.7 trillion, trillion customer assets. When they bought E-Trade, meaning E-Trade has 255 RAs, 20 billion custodial assets on the RA side. Morgan Stanley is not going to maintain the RA platform uh, on E-Trade. They are just going direct uh, by leveraging E-Trade's retail capability. Yeah, so that uh, uh, potentially all those uh, RAs out there that we're customing with E-Trade are, are up for grabs. Yeah, I mean, I, I think independent RA is a very important force in the industry because they are independent they need to provide the value add to the customers right that's that's why we love the industry it's so diversified even though like even though more than 60 percent of the assets are custody with all those big ras or schwab vanguard uh, uh goldman sachs all these big guys but we need these smaller independent ras there are over 10 20 000 of them out there in the, in the industry to keep providing the service to high numbers individual, so we can balance the whole the the, 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 every, the practice in the in industry. Yeah, for sure. Uh, one of the finalist categories that you were in, uh, named a finalist, was client onboarding. I think maybe there's a lot of work that's been done on client onboarding. It's maybe it's like one of the, the last you know uh, tech hurdles that uh, the platforms have, have tacked. It's it's still I think a, a major pain point for a lot of advisors. The, the perception would be that it's, well, how hard can it be? It's just clicking a few boxes and signing a few documents and opening up a few accounts. But tell me why client onboarding is so important for the advisor and uh, where you guys think you can improve the experience. Right. I mean, so funny, David, you mentioned that, right? I would imagine this is 21st century. You want to open an account, you just click a few buttons, right? That is the case for retail practice. But when it comes to the RA, yes, if you are RA, you have a client, they can just go to the custodial um, custodian and then click application. They can fill out everything within a few minutes. But we, we kind of look back and then try to integrate account opening with compliance with everything else with your practice. So the account client onboarding experience we're providing has two more features than the traditional one. Number one is white label. So in the account application process, your prospects will see your brand, your name. They won't see trading from, they will not see the custodian. They will only see your name in everywhere of that onboarding process. That's going to help these independent RA to add value, at least on the branding side. And number two, you as the advisor, you can upload your ADV, IMA, privacy policy, including form, form uh, what's the new, the new, new, new form introduced by form the CRS. Yeah, form CRS, form CRS, that's correct. The best uh, BI practice from CRS. Everything will be 
time stamped with a unique document ID with your client signature, time stamp everything stored digitally in your advisor portal. So we take uh, one step forward by thinking, can we just integrate everything so you don't have to you know, use a third party uh, signature, a electronic signature provider. You don't have to use a third party compliance solution provider. We kind of integrate everything into one process for the onboarding part. And there's a, there's a document management and record keeping uh, aspect there too, correct? Right, that's right. And also you can customize the questionnaire, right? That's why, I mean, we've been seeing a lot of people doing like bundling everything together and unbundling. We just take the best of all these vendors out there and then put the pieces together in a better way, in a way that we think is the best for these independent smaller RAs because we've been there, done that. This is all we need. And when we're doing this, you know, trying to become a bigger RA 10 years ago, we didn't have all these technology solutions out there. But hey, you know, everything right now is cloud-based. Let's do a better job to help these RAs. Yeah, for sure. Wes Gray was a professor of yours, correct? Oh, yes. Wesley Gray, uh, he was my long-term business partner. Uh, he was my professor at Drexel University. I was his one of uh, 15's free intern back 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Always good. Uh, and uh, so this uh, this idea for Trading Front came about when? Were you were you at Alpha Architects when you thought this was something that was needed for the industry? When did uh, the tipping point come where you said, you know what the industry needs? The industry really needs a low cost provider for the sort of all in one solution uh, that can replace the you know traditional custodial interface. When where were you? Yeah, we are. Uh, you know. Wes and I and a couple other partners, we were, you know, started Alpha Architect 10 years ago, and that was back in 2014 when we saw Wealthfront, Betterman, all these independent robo advisor. They came to you know, the RA industry and then saying, hey, we're going to revolutionize the RA industry by getting rid of all these human advisors, right? Uh, we were one of those human advisors. We were running right. a small shop and we saw the competition. We thought, hey, let's do something. Because our clients, when they saw this beautiful reporting uh, platform created by all these independent robo platforms, they would ask us, hey, where's your solution? How can I access my statement on my mobile phone? How, how can I you know, look at the performance across different household or different accounts? So we, we, we were simply trying to uh, respond to the uh, competition of these independent robo uh, platforms. That's what, we, that's what we build in-house. It's just a, a simple reporting uh, platform for our in-house clients. Uh, the, the RA is all about giving back and you have friends running other RAs, right? When they saw you have a nice platform, you, they, they will ask you, hey, can I use your platform? Our clients are having the same issue. So we said, why not? We'll help you out. So we rolled out our reporting platform to our friends who were running their RAs and they love it. Their clients love it. And down the road, that was a tipping point. We kind of realized, hey, we might need be able to build a platform into an actual platform. But, but there was internal conflict, right? Because we were a, we were a RA. And if you build a platform to help other RAs, the other RAs will think, hey, why should I store my data with you and RA? We're competing with each other. So we, we made a decision to uh, spin off the trading fund platform. But it was all started in-house in a response to the competition of robo advisors. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you saw the need uh, uh, early on from that, that time and started building it then. Right, right. All these you know, concepts, the... Uh, Philosophy all originated big back to 2014, 2013 when we were pending RA. Yeah, and, and and times change fast, and 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 you say that uh, you want to grow and you see growth. There might be other areas that you go into. What what do you say on the horizon for Trading Front? What uh, what are you guys working on now that's maybe not out there yet, but will be? Uh, or where do you kind of on your roadmap think of your you know, where are you going to move next? Right. I mean, it's a definitely very fast changing industry. And it's, I would say it's a very mature one. And also it's a highly regulated one. And we look at all these areas of potential that we think can add value to the clients or our businesses in the next three or five years. 
I think number one is definitely financial planning. Yeah, we have a lot of good providers out there. And secondly, is CRM. And thirdly, it's a client engagement, specifically client online engagement. We have a lot of experience on the mobile side. We have a white label mobile app. So that's where we are focusing more time these days, trying to build more client engagement tools and features on the mobile app. Yeah, and I think that's uh, that's crucial. And I think that was also where you were a finalist in our awards for the the mobile work. You know, because I uh, I mean I don't need to tell you, I, you know, clients out there maybe are starting to not perceive the difference between is there a human on the other side of the screen or is there not? And, and we know the value of the human advisor. We know that having that human advisor there is good, but the ease with which uh, clients can interact with financial plans, even and portfolio investing and and performance reporting over the mobile phone without any human involvement at all is, is, is great and it should be scary for financial advisors. So they need to, to, to have those same kind of tools while not sacrificing the human element inside the relationship. Yeah, that, that, that's 100% correct. And I agree with you. The human piece is, is of paramount importance in the advisory industry. I mean, we see a lot of AI-driven right, concepts, business models these days, but let I me mean, try to explain the AI strategy to a high net worth individual. That, that's to me, that's yeah. to me is almost like 100% black <laughs> boxing. We, we down that, I mean, we were building value momentum strategies. I mean, we couldn't even educate these uh, clients enough on value and momentum, you know, manage futures and try to right. explain AI. Um, I, have, I, have, I mean, I, I love AI. I think AI is going to help everybody, especially on the uh, um, operational task uh, optimization part. Right, uh, kind of like a, your a personal chauffeur and a personal assistant, but but AI driven you know, strategies that 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 is area that I'm I'm not 100 percent certain. That's trickier, yeah. No, I think uh, that that seems harder. But but you're right. For the advisor, shouldn't be scared about AI. There are applications that that could I think really benefit uh, advisor workflow if it's AI assisted. Is that sort of where you're thinking about uh, going? Maybe in a longer shot, uh, yeah. that is not our current focus. Um, a lot of other things we need to do and need to improve on, you know, portfolio management, onboarding mobile app. AI probably let's wait for a few years. Yeah. And see how the industry goes first. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, it, Yang, this has been great. Yang Zhu, tra- uh, founder and CEO of Trading Front. Thanks very much for your time here. Really appreciate it. And congratulations. Again, on uh, the two categories, the most recent WealthManagement.com Industry Awards. And congratulations on being a 10 to watch. All right. Thank you, David. Appreciate the uh, uh, interview and also appreciate the uh, recognition from WealthManagement.com. Very good. Uh, Good luck to you. And we hope to see you soon in the future. Same here. Thank you. This content has been made for information and educational purposes only. The views and opinions represent the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views and opinions of WealthManagement.com. 